Good afternoon. In this session, we're going to explore the building blocks for estimates, items, item templates, and line items. Building estimates in Estimate Rocket can be done in a variety of ways. The basic building block is the line item. Depending upon the trade, we tend to use similar items for each estimate. Quantity may vary, or color, or even level of detail, but the basic components are used over and over again. Estimate Rocket allows you to create item lists and item templates to help streamline the process of creating your estimates and also to allow you to easily calculate the price of the product for your customer, labor hours, and materials needed to do the job. Estimate Rocket allows you to create different types of items for different needs. On the project shown here, there are labor and assembly items shown. We are going to explore how they are used and how they're set up. The first is a simple labor item. If we edit it, you can see that we mainly have a price and quantity. If we didn't want these hours to add to the project total, we could just use a generic item for this, and then it would not be included. Labor items get included in the project labor total. The next item is an assembly item for painting walls. Assembly items are made up of one or more materials and one or more labor items. In this case, it's painting labor and paint material. The unit price for an assembly is calculated by the production rates that you enter for the labor and materials. In this case, one square foot of wall painting is priced at 28 cents each. We could adjust that price by changing the square foot per hour for the labor or the square feet per gallon for the paint. We'll talk about that a little more later. The last item is created from an item template that contains several assembly, labor, and material items. An item template really streamlines the use of your items when entering an estimate. Here we enter the square feet and counts of each item that we want in our estimate, and Estimate Rocket creates a line item including all of those services. Now let's look at how these all get set up. These are all items I have set up in the interior painting group to make it easy to isolate them and look at them together. When starting out, the first thing you want to do is create a labor item. In many cases, you'll only need one or two labor items to define all of the other items that you're going to use in Estimate Rocket. The price on a labor item should be the hourly rate that you charge for your services. Fill in the options group so it's easy to keep your items together. As you'll see here, I've used interior painting. If you do charge sales tax on labor in your trade area, be sure and check the taxable box. If you want to separate interior and exterior labor totals, then you would want to create a labor item for each of those. That way on your estimates you'll be able to get a total of the interior labor and the exterior labor. If you have premium services or other services that you charge more per hour for, then you might want to create a labor item for those services as well. The next thing to do is to create items for the materials that you want used. In this case, I have several different types of paint that would be used for different types of work. You can enter specific types of paint or use generic descriptions as I have here. You can always change them on a project. When entering your materials, enter the name for the material and then the unit. The unit should be the unit of measure that you purchased the item by. In this case, I used gallon. The price should be the price you would charge your customer for an entire gallon of paint, the retail price. If you are using costing, the material cost should be the cost that you pay your supplier for a gallon of paint. Fill in the options group again so it's easy to keep your items together. I used interior painting again in this example. If you charge your customer sales tax, make sure and click the taxable checkbox. It's important to do that on labor items too, if labor is taxable in your trade area. Now that we have our basic labor and materials defined, we can create assemblies. Let's go in and take a look at the brush and roll GWB walls two coats. Think of an assembly as a service. This item has the assembly type selected. Think of an assembly as a service. It's a collection of labor and materials that you sell, in this case by the square foot, or by the count, or by linear feet, or some other unit of measure. The type is set to assembly, the description is brush and roll GWB, and the unit in this case is square feet, since that's how we're going to price and estimate it. Now the magic of assemblies. We use the green plus to add items to the assembly. For the first coat, I added the interior painting services labor item and entered a first coat production rate of 335 square feet per hour. Then I added an interior wall paint and entered a spread rate of 350 square feet per gallon. That's the manufacturer's recommended spread rate. For the second coat, I added an interior painting services again, this time with a production rate of 375 square feet per hour since we're going to go a little bit faster on our second coat. Then I added the interior wall paint for the second coat 
and again entered the spread rate of 350 square feet per gallon. Estimate Rocket uses the price we charge for labor and the price of a gallon of paint and figures a price per square foot for this service. Once we create one assembly, we can use the copy item option in the item list in many cases to quickly create additional items that we need. Once we've defined our assemblies, we can build them into an item template. An item template really speeds up the estimating process. It makes it more accurate and much faster. So let's take a look at our interior area template that I've already set up. You can create as many templates as you want. Make sure you name the template based on what it contains. So for example, interior repaint or exterior new construction area or entire house or whatever different types of templates that you want to create. You can, as again, you can create as many as you need, not too many, but as many as you need. The output a single line item checkbox is very powerful. When that is checked, all of the items you enter a quantity on when using this template will get summarized in one line item on your project. We'll see that in a minute. If you do want separate line items for each item selected, then make sure and uncheck that box. That will give you an individual line item on your project for each item that has a quantity filled in. Only fill in the quantity field when you're editing your item template if you have items that you use almost every time you use this template. You might have items for supplies and setup time that you want every time you use this template. For those, you could fill in a quantity of one, meaning you want one quantity of them. If your setup time was defined as an assembly of one hour or labor item of one hour, then you could enter two or three if you wanted as the quantity if you want more than one hour for your setup. For the description, you want to enter what's typically done when using this template. You'll be able to edit it later when you're using the template on a project, but you want that to be set to whatever you would normally do when you use this template. Make sure at the bottom to enter the item group you normally want this item to be in to organize your projects the way you want them to be. Now, here's how it all works. We go back to our project. When we originally added this item template to this project, we filled in the appropriate quantities for uh, the brush and roll two coats, brush and roll the ceiling two coats, how much base trim did we have in linear feet, how many doors, and how many windows. We simply filled in our quantities. We could edit the description if we wanted to. Uh, again, it defaults to the group that we want it to be in. The final result is we get our paint living room line item with the description we want and the total price based on all of the production rates that we entered in our assemblies. Now, the bonus here is that if we look towards the bottom of the screen, you'll see that in addition to getting a price for painting the living room, we also have a summary of all the labor hours and all of the materials that we're going to need for this project down in the bottom. That's the beauty of using assemblies. We get to get a separated out material list and a detailed labor list as well. I hope this overview of items and assemblies has been helpful. and We look forward to seeing you again in our next training video.